Jacqueline could only communicate by giving a thumbs up or down. And almost a year after her accident, she hadn't spoken a word. Still, her parents held out hope. And not only would their daughter talk again, she would tell the world about God's miracle working power. On October 30th, 2018, one phone call completely upended the lives of the Pellicott family. We were gonna go um, to lunch, but um, all of a sudden Jacqueline just quit texting back. It said University uh, Medical Center. My heart sunk right then and there because I knew. I just started praying. I just kept slamming my hands on the steering wheel. Just trying to get to her. Sherry's first call was to her husband, Dennis. Their 20-year-old daughter, Jacqueline, and her boyfriend were pulling out at a busy intersection when a large truck slammed into the passenger side of their Jeep where Jacqueline was sitting. We answer the call, hey, babe, how's it going? And it's not, hey, babe, how you going? It's, hey, babe, we got a problem. Rescue personnel rushed Jacqueline to University Medical Center in El Paso, Texas, where her parents arrived shortly after. Although her boyfriend walked out with minor injuries, Jacqueline suffered numerous injuries and fractures and a traumatic brain injury. She wasn't expected to live much longer. To process somebody telling your daughter's not gonna survive doesn't set in because you're like, this can't happen to us. I just saw Jacqueline, you know, three hours ago at home. How can we already be here in a hospital with her fighting for her life? In surgery, Doctors had to remove two portions of Jacqueline's skull to relieve pressure on the brain. Hours later, Sherry and Dennis were allowed to see Jacqueline, who was now in a medically induced coma. It didn't look like Jacqueline. Tubes from every portion of her body coming out. Her head was swollen, her eyes were bruised. It didn't look like her at all. Doctors did not know how much more time Jacqueline had, if any. Even if so, they were certain she would never be herself again. They told us because of the severe brain damage and the swelling that Jacqueline would be in a vegetative state for the rest of her life. I kept just praying, you know, God, just keep Jacqueline, keep her with us. About three days later, Sherry says she was praying for her daughter, when she received a word from God. God told me Jacqueline would be recovered and she would have a foundation and she would bring thousands to him through her testimony. Prayers after that prayer changed everything because it was now we had this hope, we had this God, big God standing beside us. Two months Jacqueline held on before she was transported to Tear Memorial in Houston a hospital that specializes in traumatic brain rehabilitation. Finally, when it became clear that Jacqueline would live at least, they brought her out of the coma. She still showed no signs of cognitive or physical recovering. Jacqueline was in a wheelchair. Jacqueline was not speaking. Jacqueline could not hold her head up. She could not really move her legs at all. I was having a rough time you know, just accepting that Jacqueline was in the condition she was in. I had fear because I don't know. You have fear and you have faith. I had to get a hold of my fear and put it to my faith. Every night we had everyone praying. We picked a time specifically that prayers would go up for Jacqueline. In the coming months, Jacqueline would endure intense rehab friends and family continue to pray daily. Jacqueline remained in rehab for nearly a year before finally going home, still in a wheelchair and bedridden. Then one night, Jacqueline surprised her mom. I went in there and I said, Jacqueline, are you okay? And she gave me a thumbs up. And I asked her, do you need anything? And she gave me a thumbs down. And I said, okay, well, I love you. And in the faintest, tiniest whisper, she said, I love you too. And I started screaming. Two months later, Jacqueline continued to surprise when she stood up for the first time. 
When people would tell me, you're not gonna be able to do this, I would just say, okay, thank you very much. And we would leave and I would just pray about it and ask God, what are you gonna do about, what are you gonna do with me? As she continued rehab, Jacqueline found different ways to get back to normal. I probably built over 200 Lego sets and I really feel like it's helped me with my hand-eye coordination. My faith is even stronger than it was because I know what God can do for me and for others. Jacqueline went on to continue her college career, majoring in pre-med to become a neuropsychologist. She and her parents also started the Jacqueline Strong Foundation. The Pellicots also have a renewed belief in prayer for themselves and for others. We're still healing. We're still recovering. I have a testimony. My testimony is how good God is. Whether he chose to heal or take, I thank him for leaving Jacqueline here to spread his word even more. The power of prayer is amazing. For us to be able to have the front row seat and to watch Jacqueline not only come back from something she was never expected to come back from, but come back with such dignity and pride and just such love for God is the biggest blessing we could ever have asked for. There are miracles in the Bible, but I feel like so many people don't see real day life miracles now. So after they watch mine, then they can <laughs> see that miracles do happen. God is the same, never change, never will. Wow, I don't know about you guys, but her, her miracle testimony just honestly brings tears to my eyes. And I've actually had the privilege of meeting Jacqueline in person. And she truly is a walking, talking, beautiful depiction of what God does for us. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What God has done in Jacqueline's life literally bringing her from death to life. There is light, there is life in Jacqueline's eyes today because of the power of God. And we show you guys these stories to just encourage you in your faith, to believe for the impossible in your life. What God has done for Jacqueline, he can do for you. He can do for a loved one that you've been praying and interceding for and believing for a miracle. And today we are going to believe that God wants to do the impossible in your life because he is the God of the impossible. There is nothing, absolutely nothing too hard for our God. And right now we're just going to invite the Holy Spirit to do what only he can do. But before we do that, we want to continue to encourage you and uplift you in your faith. Here's an, another amazing miracle testimony. This is someone who emailed us. This is Isabel. She said, I had very serious neck pain from a pinched nerve. It causes headaches. And every time I move my neck, it makes a cracking noise. Today, I watched the video. If God can heal others, he can heal you on YouTube. I heard Gordon say, you're laying your hand on the back of your neck and you've had reoccurring neck problems. God's healing your neck right now. He's healing all the muscles, all the vertebrae, Everything concerning it now is healed and restored. And all of that pain that was shooting out of it is gone now in Jesus' name. I immediately said, it's me, and claimed my healing. Suddenly the pain went away. I could move my neck without, without pain. I have raised my hands and praise to God that I have no more neck pain. Hallelujah. That's amazing. <laughs> Here's Cindy. Ashley prayed today for a left hip muscle pain. Uh, sciatic, I was sitting with my hands on my painful left hip, praying to God for relief when she received the word. I claimed it and began crying. I have had more relief all day from pain than I have had in weeks. Praise God for healing and answering prayers. Let that testimony, let these testimonies encourage you. God answers prayer. He wants to do things with you. He's got a hope and a future for you. Uh, part of that story reminded me of when I was watching over my father in, in the hospital. He had had a stroke. And, and in his dreams, he was praying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Isn't that wonderful? So pray that same prayer. Lord, what do you want me to do? 
How do you want me to handle this situation? How do you want to see me through? What you saw in that, that great miracle, what happened, the, the, the family had hope that through their daughter, many people would turn to Christ. So, so have hope in the Lord. He has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. He doesn't want you to see destruction. He wants you to see life forevermore. I came that you might have life. That's the words of Jesus. Let's believe that. Let's claim that. Let's receive that right now. Lord God Almighty, we come to you and we're encouraged by the word of the testimonies that we have heard and have seen. We are encouraged today. And Lord, we know the word of the testimony, the blood of the Lamb, is what is needed to overcome all the works of the enemy. So with your blood we come. And by your stripes, we are healed. And Lord, we just put ourselves before your throne. What would you have us to do? How can you use us, Lord God? And Lord, give us that hope and that future and give us healing that we can rise and stand as witness to your great power. Do it now, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Ashley, God's giving you some. Yeah, but you, <clears throat> excuse me. I believe somebody's watching, and you've got. Uh, I just specifically heard bronchial issues. I'm not sure if that's bronchitis or there's something going on with your lungs being able to expand and inhale. And I just believe God is healing you of those uh, bronchial issues in the name of Jesus. You're going to be be able to breathe deep breaths again in Jesus' name. Just receive it right now. Thank you, Lord. There's someone you've had a head injury. I'm, I'm not sure the cause of it. I'm just, um, uh, it's, 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 there's, there's something over just the entire top of your head. I don't know what it is. But uh, you know, there's, there's something on top of your head that has uh, been put there by the doctors. You are being healed, and your brain is being restored, and, and your consciousness is being restored. All of your senses are being restored. All of your communication with your limbs, everything is being restored to you now. It's a great miracle what is happening to you. You, you are healed in Jesus' name. And just as he said to the paralyzed man, get up, because God has done a wonderful miracle for you. Yeah, I believe somebody's watching, and I, I believe God is restoring full movement to your left foot. For whatever reason, you have not been able to move that foot for quite some time. Uh, there's also some neuropathy going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just believe God is healing that left foot for you, restoring full movement in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So when you got severe infection uh, in, in, your, in, in your abdomen, I, I, I think the source was gallstones, gallbladder, but it spread into your liver. In the name of Jesus, be healed and be cleansed from all of that. No more sepsis, no more infection, no more inflammation, no more pain. In the name of Jesus, be healed and be set free. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. You so loved us that you gave your only son. Lord, we, we believe. We want to be a whosoever would believe on him, would not perish. Lord, we believe in your sacrifice and what you've done for us. We receive all that you have for us. Give us this hope and your future, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Let us share your report with the world so that others are encouraged at what God is doing today. And if you need prayer, we're here for you. 24 hours a day, we believe in prevailing prayer, the prayer that doesn't give up until you get the answer. So call us, 1-800-700-7000.